Wilhelm Wundt was the world's first psychologist in the 1800s. And he had a lot of students under him that he would, I guess, teach and show different techniques to. And one thing that he would do, he would practice with his students something called introspection. He would have an object, and he'd set that object out on a table or in front of a, a student. He would ask them to observe it, to put aside all distractions and to focus on the immediate thing at hand, this object. It could be a watch, it could be a pencil. Let's just go with the example of a watch. So he'd set the watch out and he'd ask his students to describe the watch in a very objective manner. So what do you see? I see a leather band. I see a glass circle. I see two hands that are ticking. I see numbers. So that's what they see. And then he'd tap into something a little different. Not just what they observe, but a sense of awareness. What you're looking at. What is it evoking? What is it causing you to feel in the moment? Um, what do you get out of, uh, out of seeing this? What kind of emotion? What is it pulling out of you? So the student would describe it. Maybe uh, one person would say, well, when I looked at the leather band, I felt uh, a sense of confidence because it reminded me of my father's watch or something. And so he would focus more in on the emotive response as well. Later on, this was termed structuralism, looking at the process, the cognitive process, in a very detailed manner. So that's what he would do. That was called introspection. He would ask them what they see and what it would evoke. It was a type of practice that it took skill. After a while, you begin to hone in on and slow down the cognitive process that you experience. And so my question, something that I've been throwing around in my mind, is this something that we do constantly? Is it something that we do when we go on autopilot? Is it something that is just so much of our life that we don't, we don't realize it? And this idea of introspection. Do we behave in a manner that's so automatic that we no longer know what is causing the response. We no longer understand what's happening. We're just so quick. And then, does it happen intentionally, too? So is it two-sided? Do we naturally experience this? But then are there times in life where we intentionally do this? Where we pause, we stop. I think of maybe a church service. We meditate, we focus. Maybe on home, when we're doing homework or an assignment or, or a task at work. We have this deep level of introspection that is very focused and we're in tune with what we're thinking and what we're, what we're feeling. But when does it turn off and on? And what points do we experience that transition? Do we even realize that we're experiencing that transition? So do we experience it naturally? Do we experience it intentionally or both? When I think about this, I think of self-concept. I think of uh, identity formation. That we can use this skill in the manner that Wundt would work with his students to hone in on it and make it an identity formation exercise where through this process we can learn more about ourselves, about others, and about the world. I think the same sort of idea that the more you learn about your creator, your beliefs, the more you understand yourself and the world that you live in. Just the other night, every Wednesday night, we have to take the trash cans clear up to the curb. And last night, if uh, any of you guys were outside, you've noticed a, um, a full moon and it lit everything up. And I was, as I was taking the trash cans up to the curb, I noticed something. So I'd noticed that when I was younger, I would have this type of fear of the dark or if I'm walking through woods or like a wooded area or I see a wooded area, I would grow a sense of fear with, uh, you know, in regards to the unknown, the environment around me. I can't see what's there, so, so I'm afraid. And the, the moon, it lit Last night it lit just the pathway, so I couldn't see into the brush. And I realized I didn't have a sense of fear. Now there are many components to why. I mean, I have Christ in my heart, that's something I tell my daughter all the time, so why would you fear anything? But also there was this understanding that I'm just as much, of, uh, I'm just as much part of the environment that I'm in as the environment is part of experiencing me. So I'm experiencing the environment just as much as it's experiencing me, meaning whatever emotive response, it's outside of that environment. It's something that's existing existing up here. So for example, I think of scripture with this identity form, formation. I, I learned, through, that's what I learned through that, that walking the bins up last night, that uh, why would you fear if you're so much part of, part of your environment? It wouldn't make sense. But I, I see scripture in that, that, uh, that light too. 
that we perhaps observe it, we read it, we live it, but do we experience it, do we engage it in a way that we are watching scripture happen on a day to day? Are we able to, to pick out patterns? Are we able to focus so much on our observational skills that we can see a, a, a certain scripture play out in real life in front of us and say, oh yeah, that's, that's what that means, or that's what that is. I'm seeing it in front of me, I can pick up on it. And in turn, I can learn about myself and about that person and about scripture and about the world and about my creator. I, I wonder if we, if we live that way. It makes me think, are we active participants of our own reality? Am I an active participant of my own reality every day? Or am I just experiencing external factors as they come? Uh, Colossians 4.2 says, Devote yourself to prayer, being watchful, being thankful. Uh, it's a devotion. It's something that you spend time in. With practice comes mastery. Are we just floating through life reacting? Or have we built and practiced the ability to observe patterns and our place in the universe. I think that is active observation, not sitting on the sidelines, but also making wise decisions as we weave through our own narrative. Viktor Frankl, a psychological theorist and Holocaust survivor said, between stimulus and response, there's a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. He's saying, take it all in without being timid. Learn to find the gaps and patterns and turn them into opportunities, whether for yourself or for others.